So today I've got something uh, interesting for us to uh, take a look at. I know a lot of you out there like your uh, Yagi antennas and I've got this one that I purchased off eBay. Not sure of the manufacturer yet unless there's something on the inside of this. There's nothing stamped on the outside of the Yagi antenna at all. But uh, it's a really nice quality constructed uh, Yagi antenna for uh, a professional setup and indeed this one has been used outside you can just tell with the uh, staining on here and everything and it's been mounted uh, on a pole so it's been mounted in that direction like that um, the seller on eBay has got uh, a couple of these that he is selling and they are really really cheap I think I paid a fiver for this and uh, a couple of pounds for uh, shipping so I'll leave a link in the description but uh, at that kind of price I don't think they'll be uh, holding on to these for too long so what I thought we'd do is take a uh, really close look at the construction of this and uh, more importantly take a look under here at the uh, main driven element now this is a uh, 12 element Yagi and uh, if you include the driven element and I presume the reflector is also under here then it's a uh, 14 element Yagi antenna as I say no details about this really I've got no idea of the gain of this and uh, you know no idea of the manufacturer now if I did have to uh, make a guess on the gain of this I would say anywhere between 14 to 16 possibly 17 DB just going off the uh, amount of elements that are on, on here and uh, the many calculators online when you factor in uh, the amount of elements when uh, you want to build a Yagi that's the kind of figure that they uh, come out with when it uh, comes to gain but there's uh, many different things to take into consideration not just the amount of elements but uh, I would have thought it would be around uh, 14 to 15 possibly 16 DB it would certainly be in that kind of a ballpark so the way they've gone about building this Yagi is a little bit uh, unusual in itself as far as I haven't uh, seen one constructed like this before and you've got your uh, directors on here these elements that are on the uh, boom now this is a, a piece of uh, aluminium box tubing and under here they've got this uh, plastic here now that will be acting as an insulator between the uh, boom and the uh, directors here so I'm presuming that uh, this is a uh, Yagi antenna with insulated directors but they've also got some metal rivets on the top holding these uh, elements in place so I'm going to get my multimeter just to check continuity between the uh, boom and these elements because I've got a uh, feeling that uh, they're not isolated they've just used these plastic pieces here to uh, lift them up slightly because I think they'd have connectivity between the rivet and the uh, boom so I've got my multimeter set to continuity here and uh, you can see that the element is completely isolated from the boom there so I'm not sure where this rivet's going in but uh, unless there's some kind of plastic on that rivet to isolate it they are uh, not connected to the boom so this Yagi has uh, an isolated boom remember I've said in previous videos uh, between isolated and not isolated you know I don't think there's much uh, between them but uh, many Yagi fans have their own opinion about that now one of the things that uh, give this away that uh, it is a quality uh, Yagi antenna is the coax that we've got on here it's quite a short length and it goes to an end type connector which is uh, you know pretty standard for uh, professional outside setups and uh, the coax here is really really good quality coax it's got a tight weave on this so it's going to be extremely low loss and that weave is so tight it's almost got a semi rigid kind of uh, feel to this even though it's not but uh, you know I would expect this coax to be extremely expensive stuff if you wanted to uh, buy some of this and uh, that you know just going to the effort of using this really does uh, make it stand out that it's a uh, quality piece of kit now I thought I was going to have to uh, drill out these little Phillips screws but uh, I managed to go through uh, my uh, screwdriver sets and find the precise Phillips uh, screw bit to uh, fit nice and tightly into here because it was really really tight and if we take a look at the screws now that uh, I've taken them out they've got glue residue on here so they've uh, used some kind of epoxy glue 
uh, on the, the screw here to add a little bit more uh, weatherproof into this I would have thought um, you know and I'm expecting that they never envisaged anybody taking one of these apart but uh, really really tight to get out and if I didn't find the uh, precise bit to use against these I'd have uh, just ended up rounding these off and would have had to drill them out but uh, yeah some kind of epoxy on the screws there and I've managed to get in between that seal there but uh, I'm doing it really really gently because I don't want to crack this plastic because this plastic's been exposed to UV over time so it's going to be extremely brittle compared to what it was when it was first manufactured and it's definitely uh, sealed up to not let any water in there so now that we've got this apart it looks at first glance a pretty uh, simple standard construction here this is the uh, reflector that I was uh, talking about that it must be on the inside here and this is the main driven element but uh, I have to say that uh, in all the books that I've read about Yagi antennas and remember you know I've been into antennas for quite some time ever since I was first at university back at the uh, turn of the millennium there but uh, I was never really into Yagi antennas but uh, this driven element here is extremely interesting and I have never come across this kind of design before now at first glance it looks like a standard uh, dipole here that's uh, got the uh, you know the two elements here and here going across the uh, boom of the Yagi but we've then got this down here that dips and that what that is is the uh, ballon of the uh, element now in uh, Yagis that I've built in the past uh, when you have a uh, dipole arrangement like this for your driven element you do need a ballon and that's something I've learnt over the years by uh, looking a bit more and studying Yagi antennas but uh, for a folded uh, dipole, uh, say a, uh, a loop uh, driven element, you don't tend to need a ballon for one of those. Um, yes, you get a bit more uh, better, much better frequency response, but you also get a little bit of loss with them. So it kind of negates each other out. So when uh, I'm doing a loop kind of element, I don't bother with a ballon. But when you're using an element like this, the uh, more traditional dipole, uh, elements then you do need a ballon otherwise you know it's not going to work very well but uh, that's what they've done here they've come down here with this ballon and then uh, come back up there and uh, that's pretty unusual the feed points here one here and one here at the top and then you've got this folding down here to uh, create the ballon now I want to remove this because I want to see if uh, that ballon folding back on itself down here is uh, grounded or not to the uh, outer braid of the coax I'm just looking down here and we can see a little bit of solder down there but uh, yeah that's an interesting ballon normally you just get a little piece of uh, the coax dangling down here at a certain length that creates your ballon so this type here I've never actually seen that before so here's a closer look at the setup then you've got the uh, dipole here and you can see the uh, two feed points there that to uh, connect to the dipole and then we've got this folded ballon down here and that is connected uh, to the uh, ground plane of the uh, outer braid of the coax and then we've got the uh, reflecting uh, part of the element here at the back and that is also uh, soldered down onto the uh, outer braid of the coax so the uh, main reflector and the uh, elements are basically grounded together but uh, each of the parasitic elements uh, down uh, on the rest of the boom of the uh, Yagi antenna are not connected so these are the only two that are connected and uh, you can get a closer look now of the way they've uh, built this and as I say I have never come across uh, a ballon or a uh, element on a Yagi that's constructed in this way but uh, some of you uh, ham radio guys that uh, follow me on YouTube I've probably seen this before but uh, I have to say I haven't and uh, I really want to build a, uh, another long range uh, Yagi antenna using this design that you can see here it uh, seems a pretty simple design so I've gone ahead and taken some measurements here and jotted them down so you can uh, see them now I was a little bit surprised with some of these measurements and uh, the basically the dipoles here 
are 23 millimeters long which seem at first glance to be a little bit short for 2.4 gigahertz because this uh, Yagi antenna uh, the seller assures me is uh, a 2.4 gigahertz Yagi antenna now if it was for 5 gigahertz then uh, you know 5 gigahertz uh, is uh, the kind of frequency that people like to set up point-to-point -point Wi-Fi at just to get the extra broadband through uh, the uh, wave there but um, if it was going to be a 5 gigahertz Yagi antenna then I'd expect uh, the uh, elements here on the dipole to be around 15 16 millimeters long and also the uh, spacing between the directors uh, the parasitic elements on the Yagi uh, don't seem to fall in line with uh, ones that I've built before for uh, 5 gigahertz so uh, I am presuming that this is uh, 2.4 gigahertz and I think maybe why the uh, measurements here seem a little bit short is to do with the ballon that they've got on here now if you've seen previous videos where I've gone over the uh, Hertzian dipole and why it's only 25 millimeters long instead of 31 millimeters long you'll know that uh, the reason is is because uh, the Hertzian dipole is capacitive and if an antenna is capacitive it's uh, shorter but it's shorter and still stays on center frequency so I'm presuming and also going by the shape of this as well I'm you know I'm pretty much certain that this ballon here is having a uh, capacitive effect on the overall uh, antenna itself the overall driven element which is this bit here so they've made it shorter to stay on center frequency because of the uh, capacitive effect of this ballon here and uh, I think that is uh, why we're not seeing 31 millimeters here and 31 millimeters here so these are the measurements then the ballon here is uh, 30 millimeters long so it's a lot longer than the uh, elements on the uh, dipole here and here so it's 30 millimeters long and it's 5.5 millimeters wide here and then folds back up to make contact there and the back reflector is uh, 68 millimeters long and uh, all this uh, it looks like brass they've made it out of here is uh, eight millimeters wide so it does look especially the uh, re reflector on this it always amazes me how flimsy some of the reflectors look on the uh, yagi antennas but uh, it does its job you know uh, I, I mean you would think that if you had something thick stopping and blocking and uh, reflecting uh, all those microwaves back onto the elements here it would work a lot better but uh, no you often see these little flimsy uh, reflectors here but uh, you know it, it must do its job I mean the front to back ratio of this must be uh, you know pretty low otherwise uh, it'd be a poor design for a directional antenna so before we hook it up to the uh, network analyzer I thought it'd be a good idea just to give it a quick Wi-Fi test now I've got it quite low down it's on my uh, test bench here I've got this makeshift stand I mean it would perform a lot better if we uh, elevated it a little bit more because it is quite low but uh, let's give it a scan and see how well it does perform So it's loaded up uh, quite a few access points there and uh, you know it's got some nice green healthy access points so to say it's uh, quite low down and in a fixed position i'm uh, pretty pleased with uh, the performance of the performance of this uh, yagi i think it's doing really well to say it's at such a low elevation where most of the wi-fi access points around here will be uh, up much higher than uh, what this Yagi is on this bench so this is the test setup I've got the uh, Yagi antenna onto the uh, makeshift stand there the drill press and there we've got the uh, test set up there and I've got it connected up to the network analyzer so here's the output on the network analyzer then I'm scanning from uh, 1 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz here and we've got this really wide frequency of operation here that's uh, you know pretty standard for most Yagi antennas they are do have quite a wide uh, frequency of operation there's 2.4 gigahertz and it's just 
out of uh, the optimal placement here on this uh, frequency output but I think that's mainly down to uh, the way I've got it set up here I really need to get it high and uh, I've been talking to a few people recently and uh, they have a uh, antenna test set up in uh, the roof of uh, their garage like I've got here so I'm thinking of uh, mounting a test set up in the roof for, especially for antennas like this but uh, if I do go near it I can make it jump up and down so it's not probably in the uh, best situation here for the uh, setup itself but uh, you can see how wide that is and uh, you know optimal here this is the uh, 2.4 gigahertz this is the center of the Wi-Fi spectrum and uh, we can move it along so it works uh, up to uh, the top end of 2.4 gigahertz and you probably get it to work just fine as well all the way down here to uh, say 1.9 gigahertz so it does have quite a broad range of uh, operation and as I said at the beginning of the video with uh, the dipole measurements on this uh, antenna it must be a capacitive design in order for this to work so well at 2.4 gigahertz and uh, I did suspect that it may be uh, not 2.4 gigahertz but indeed it is working at 2.4 gigahertz and I'm pretty sure if I had uh, this Yagi set up in the roof away from uh, a lot of interference we'd get a really uh, good frequency response probably much like we've got on the uh, screen at the moment. So it's turned out to be a uh, very nice uh, Yagi antenna it's just unfortunate that uh, there's no manufacturer's label on this anywhere so uh, you know we can find out who made this but it's been made really really well and uh, getting hold of this and tearing it down I certainly learnt something about uh, the driven element in this one that I will try to incorporate into a future Yagi build and uh, you know little things like this uh, are well worth it just for what we've learned about the uh, driven element there certainly uh, I didn't know uh, you know how to construct a ballon like that I mean uh, I've learnt something new today and uh, as I say it was a bargain on uh, eBay uh, I'll put a link in the description but uh, I have purchased another one of these because uh, I intend to give this one away and I want to keep one to keep for myself for the future but uh, yeah I mean uh, I'll include the uh, measurements at the end of this video so you can have a go at uh, making one and uh, incorporating it into uh, one of your own designs but certainly you know uh, if uh, you built a Yagi antenna with possibly you know three directors or even two you'll be quite surprised how much gain you uh, get off those two uh, parasitic elements there the directors just with two there you have to add quite a few of these uh, you know to get uh, the gain really up but uh, you know a small Yagi antenna using this design cut off about there and about here at the back would uh, fit nicely into a backpack so if you've got any uh, insights into the uh, manufacturer of this then you know please let us know in the comments uh, if you have got building one of these using uh, what you've seen here in this video please let us know how you got on and uh, any comments or questions drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them but uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one